TYT Sports recapping Sergio Martinez's TKO of Matthew Macklin on Saturday at the theater at Madison Square Garden. Uh, bringing in Robert Exel, the editor in chief of Boxing.com. Robert, how are you? I'm great. And yourself? I'm doing good. Uh, we, for those obviously just tuning in, we were talking off the air. I frankly said I didn't think it was an impressive performance. I thought it was a good performance, a good, not great performance. For Sergio Martinez, uh, Robert, I know you disagree with me. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you the reasons why. Before I ask you why you don't think it was a good or great performance, I mean, I'll tell you why I think it was a great performance. Okay. Because of, of, of his ability to adapt. Adapt to a situation that was he was not expecting because uh, Macklin wasn't fighting the way he expected Macklin to fight. It took Martinez a while to sort of get into his groove, um, but he got into his groove and he ended the fight in dramatic fashion. I mean, it's sort of like it doesn't matter what happens in the beginning of the fight. It sort of matter, matters what happens in the end of the fight. But let me ask you, why were you not impressed by what you saw? I thought that he started very, very slowly. He won some rounds in the beginning. I thought for... Uh, not necessarily how hyped up he is, but as we consider him, I know that you don't consider him this, but I frankly do, a top three pound-for-pound pound contender, I thought that he didn't look that good. I thought if he were to look better, he should win more of the early rounds. Well, again, the, game, the name of the game is boxing. Uh, I think our expectations have somehow been distorted by uh, focusing only on the present, all right, where we have sluggers and we have sluggers and we have sluggers. And there are a couple of boxers, but mostly everybody's a slugger. I mean, Martinez is a boxer. His athleticism, I mean, mm -hmm. I was, again, I was ringside. I was watching the fight in New York, and his athleticism, I was just bowled over. His sort of sixth sense of where he as a opponent were at every given second of every given round. I mean, I was so impressed. He never lost his focus. He kept control of the action. Uh, Macklin's a tough guy. Macklin had his moments, uh, and all, all the credit in the world to him for it. But Martinez fought a really smart fight, and he adapted to what he had to adapt to, which is really the sign of a true champion. Um, if you look at Manny Pacquiao, um, who is maybe most people's books, number one and number two, pound for pound, um, we saw his failure to adapt to Juan Manuel Marquez last time they fought. Now, every fighter has their problems uh, with certain fighters and certain styles. I mean, that's been true throughout history. Ali had trouble with Ken Norton. He had trouble with Joe Frazier. It, excuse me. It's not unusual. But Sergio... Uh, he did what he had to do. He may have started slowly, as you indeed point out, but, I mean, why should he not start slowly? It's a 12-round fight. I mean, what, what is the hurry? Should he go out there and try to knock Mac no, out? No, 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 as not at all, not at all. And I'm not, I'm not one of those people that have, this, uh, that have this sort of look into boxing and thinking that, you know, if he doesn't, like they were, I remember the announcers were talking about Nonito Donaire and that he, because he didn't knock out his opponent or because a fighter doesn't knock out their opponent, that they're viewed as soft and they're not crowd pleasing. And you know what? What it comes down to, as you said, is that it is boxing. I just thought Macklin boxed better from rounds. I mean, again, Martinez stole a few here and there, but he really picked it up in rounds eight through 11, and when he landed the two knockdowns in round 11. I just thought that Macklin outboxed him. Macklin got there first, and when he landed first and threw first, he was dominating the fight for most of the fight, it seemed. But isn't that what we want to see? Don't we want to see competitive fights? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, I mean, we have seen so many non-competitive fights and so many fights where it goes to the scorecards, and of course everybody holds their breath because nine times, or at least eight times out of ten, I mean, the scores don't reflect what the fight was about. This was one of those instances where it was competitive, and that's really what it is we want to see. We, want, we don't want to see one guy beating up another. If that's what... If that's what we want to see, I mean, we can watch Tom Cruise movies day in and day out. Um, but in a boxing ring, we really want to see a couple fighters who are evenly matched. And, and this is an interesting fight because they were, they were really 
representing different styles. And as Macklin had adapted, with the aid of Buddy McGirt, his trainer, um, to the fighter he was going to be fighting in Sergio, Sergio, who, again, Macklin was not fighting the fight that he expected, he adapted. And it, and, and it was like they were trading rounds early on. It wasn't as though Macklin was so dominant. They were trading rounds, and Macklin put on a great performance. And, and you know, all the credit in the world to him for it. I mean, I really thought he fought really, really well. A uh, well, uh, normally one-dimensional fighter fought three-dimensionally. And that's really to his credit. But Sergio made adapt made the, made the adaption. He was able to think in the ring, and people who can think in the ring are master boxers. Mm -hmm. Again, you said you were ringside. Did you see Sergio Martinez just dominating this fight? Did you have him way ahead on your scorecard? No, I didn't have him way ahead. I mean, I know after six that Howard Letterman had it three three. He had a tied after six. I had it four two after six. The boxing is so subjective. I mean, there's no there's no certainty in it. There's no such thing as a, as you know as home runs. And I mean, there's just it lacks that certainty. It's an objective sport. Absolutely. Um, so no, I mean, I I had Macklin being competitive. I mean, competitive throughout the fight. I mean, he caught Sergio several times. He did some great infighting, and the referee, Eddie Cotton, to his credit, let them do infighting. He wasn't breaking them up every second. I mean, it, I thought it was a fascinating fight to watch, and, and, and thrilling, just in terms of, like, two men in combat. And even more than that, I mean, it was really watching a thinking man's fighter think while he was fighting. <laughs> and where is the opportunity? Uh, for, for any of us to really witness that. It was Martinez's fourth defense at 160 pounds. The straight left hands in rounds, you could even say uh, eight through 11, were just dominant. I mean, how, how dominant was it? And was it just the fact that uh, Matthew Macklin simply could not adjust and defend to those straight left hands? Well, it's hard, first of all, that he's fighting a lefty. It always makes it hard for somebody who is a sort of a conventional, a conventional fighter, right-handed fighter. That's already something that's difficult. It's hard to find left-handed sparring partners, even harder to find left-handed sparring partners who fight the way Sergio Martinez fights, who fights unlike anybody. He basically has brought the athleticism, because he was a soccer star, or a football star, or whatever you want to call it, in Argentina, um, into boxing. He didn't box until he was 20. So his athleticism had already proven itself, and he brought that sort of, that grace and that balance and that incredible fleet of foot style of his into boxing. And I mean, for me, it's, it's, it's like a breath of fresh air. I, I, was, I was delighted to watch his performance. You sound incredibly impressed. Let me ask you this. Do you, have you seen a fighter like Sergio Martinez ever? I mean, and old school guys. I mean, certainly nobody recently, but if you look at sort of black and white tapes of like, you know, the old masters and people like Joe Gans, I mean, really, you know, people that nobody knows about, nobody thinks about, but, you know, fighters in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s who were, who were educated boxers because they were educated trainers who could teach them the fine art of boxing which, again, is not just throwing punches. I mean, there's a variety of punches. It's about angles. It's about body weight. It's about, I mean, it, it, it's a science. It's a little sweet science. So there's much involved to it. And Sergio, who I think is pretty much self-trained, I mean, he, he seems to have intuited much of these old-school techniques. I mean, I don't know how he would have done against Joe Gans. I mean, he probably would have gotten murdered. <laughs> but he's not fighting in that era. He's fighting in this era. And... And he's fighting tough guys. I mean, I'd love to see him fight Chavez. I would love to see him fight Mayweather. I mean... Well, I wouldn't hold uh, your breath, Robert. <laughs> no, not till hell freezes over. Is that going to happen? And it won't be because of Sergio Martinez either. Let me ask you this. Matthew Macklin, obviously he put on a hell of a performance. Does he have anything to hang his head about in this fight? Not really. I mean, he hung his head. I mean, he's probably still hanging his head because no, no man likes to get defeated okay. and no man likes to get knocked out. Uh, but didn't he, yeah, didn't he prove he, a lot to you? I mean, at least he proved a lot to me being a 10-to-1 underdog. I agree. 
I agree. He fought a great fight. He fought a smart fight. I couldn't believe it was the same Matthew Macklin that I'd seen fight in the past. <laughs> I mean, again, he was always, I always sort of looked at him as being so sort of one-dimensional. And here he was, fighting from the outside, you know, not bullying, not bullying in straight ahead. I mean, he really fought a smart fight. But I think he was not just sort of physically exhausted from the eighth round on. I think he was also mentally exhausted because Sergio was such an elusive presence, all that dancing in circle, dancing circles around you, dodging in and out, uh, firing. I mean, it's a, it's a frustrating experience Absolutely. for any fighter. So, Robert, I know you wanted to see Julio Cesar Chavez face uh, Sergio Martinez. I know that we should not... Uh, get our hopes up with that because obviously top rank cannot afford to have their prize fighter go down to Sergio Martinez, especially at such a young age. So let me throw out a few names for you here. Give me your take on these sorts of fights lined up with Sergio Martinez, uh, these sorts of matchups at least with Sergio Martinez. Uh, Sebastian Zibik, who is 30 and 1 at 160 pounds, do you foresee that fight possibly happening? It's a possibility. I mean, he's not a marquee name in the States, and I think it's time for Sergio to fight a marquee name in the States, but he's certainly a possibility. Okay. Uh, Canelo Alvarez, although he's fighting uh, Sugar Shane Mosley May 5th, how about at 154 pounds? That's a gigantic leap for Canelo Alvarez to fight uh, Sergio Martinez. I mean, if you think... If you think uh, Cesar Chavez would be a risk. Uh, it would be uh, it, it would be a humiliation, I think, to have Canelo Alvarez fight Martinez at this point. What about the battle of power punchers, James Kirkland against Sergio Martinez at 154? I think Sergio is too fast. I think he's too fast and too clever. Um, I think I think um, as much as I adore Kirkland and uh, his fighting style, I, I just think um, he's just a little too slow, a little bit there, to, a little too there to be hit. And I think Sergio would really have circles around him. So you would take the fight if you were Sergio Martin as his promoter, if you were Lou DiBella, you'd take that in a heartbeat. The Kirkland fight, yeah. absolutely. But but I, but if I were if I were a part of Team Kirkland, I'd rather see Kirkland, uh, you know, go after somebody else and win a title, and then have some sort of unification bout. I think Kirkland deserves a title shot, but I don't think he deserves a title shot or needs a title shot against Sergio Martinez. I think we're all in agreement that the guy deserves a title shot by now. A few more names: Andre Ward at 168. What's your take on that? He's not going to move up to that high. He's not going to fight, he's not going to fight super middle. Uh, he's basically a junior middleweight. Uh, he has trouble making the middleweight limit. Uh, if the money's there, well, you, if the money's there, and the obviously the reward, but if the fight was there and it were highly publicized, you don't think that he would uh, not necessarily make an attempt, but really think about taking that fight against Andre Ward or. Lushan Butte, one of the two? Well, I know that his promoter is not interested in that. And I know that Sergio Martinez, uh, who I've interviewed, is not interested in that either. I mean, he has trouble making 160. He has to sort of eat pastry. He has to overeat <laughs> in order to sort of fight at the middleweight limit. Um, so for him to sort of fight above his, not even his natural fighting weight, but to fight at super middle, um, why should he do it? I mean, if, if Andre Wood were a middleweight and or if Sergio were a super middleweight, it would be a fabulous fight. But since they're in different weight classes, as the weight classes are now constituted, um, I, don't think, I don't think it's a smart move for either man. There's enough competition for both of them at their, at their, nat at their natural weights. Well, let me end with this then. What do you think is the proper fight next for Sergio Martinez? I understand it's... It's very quick. <laughs> this is only two days later after his TKO over Matthew Macklin, but he's, he's cleaned house in the division. I mean, who else do you throw up against this guy? There's uh, Dimitri Pirogue, uh, another good middleweight champion who's out there. I mean, let, 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 let Sergio get um, a real belt, not this sort, of, this sort of nominal diamond belt that he has now. Uh, but whether Pirogue is willing to put it on the line um, is questionable also. I mean, Sergio Martinez is the kind of fighter that I think other fighters are going to avoid because he's so damn good, because he's so smart, because he's so fast, and because he hits hard. Um, that's quite a combination in one single person. Um, and uh, it's not going to be easy for him. 
it's not going to be easy for him to get the sort of opposition he wants and really deserves. 